Hey everybody, Robin from Backscatter here, and I'm going to teach you how to use the Backscatter Mini Flash 2 with Olympus mirrorless cameras to easily capture great underwater photos. In this video, I'm breaking it all down for you from the ground up. We're going to cover the basics first, from the different control arm styles and the hardware that you need to get it set up, the fiber optic cable, battery info and safety tips, and how to easily aim the strobe for good lighting, as well as our go-to camera settings. Then I'll explain all the modes, from automatic TTL flash power, to manual flash power, high-speed sync, and remote off-camera lighting, plus the helpful uses of test mode. Finally, I'll cap it all off with all the different accessories and how to use them underwater. If any part of this seems overwhelming or too confusing, don't worry, it's all really easy once we just break it down. Olympus mirrorless cameras are some of our favorite bang for your buck rigs right now. Whether it's the versatile and beginner friendly EM10 IV at the Backscatter Octo housing, or the high performance flagship OM1. If you wanna learn more about these cameras, we'll leave links to our underwater camera reviews for them in the description. And no worries if you have a different Olympus mirrorless camera. All the info that we're going to cover in this video will be the same for yours. If you feel like skipping past any of the initial mini flash setup stuff and just getting straight into the shooting modes, you can use the chapters in the play bar. Otherwise, let's dive in. So the first thing to do is to get the mount hooked up to the strobe. There's two options included with the mini flash, the YS mount and the ball mount. The YS mount attaches with a flathead screwdriver, it's not included. The ball mount attaches with the included hex wrench. Use the YS mount when you're connecting the strobe to a flexible control arm, and use the ball mount when connecting to ball arms. Flex arms are great because they're inexpensive, lightweight, and simple to maneuver, but you cannot add flotation to them, and they aren't as maneuverable as a ball arm. Ball arms offer the ability to add buoyancy compensation to offset the weight of the camera, and they offer way better, more finely tuned and precise control over your lighting placement, which is why ball arms are our preferred setup and what we recommend the most. Mini Flash 2 only uses one approved battery, the XTAR 21700 5000 milliamp battery. These are sold separately from the strobe, but they are the same batteries that we use in our macro wide 4300 video light, so you already have some of these batteries if you already own that light. Before we install the battery, we need to perform some preventive O ring maintenance on the battery compartment. Unthread the compartment counterclockwise from the main strobe body, and you'll see the double O ring seal. Gently remove both of those O rings and clean both of them and the groove that they sit in with a lint free paper towel. We like these blue shop style towels you can find at most hardware stores. We also clean the threads on the strobe body to make sure there's nothing sticking on there either. Then you just want to re-lubricate those o-rings using the included o-ring grease. You want to use just a little dab here, just enough to leave those o-rings looking shiny and feeling smooth, not so much that you can see clumps of grease stuck on there. Once these o-rings are re-lubricated, reinstall them in the clean grooves on the battery compartment. Here's a quick pro tip. Apply just a little bit of o-ring grease to the threads themselves on the battery compartment to prevent corrosion and long-term wear and tear. When installing the battery, drop it in so that the positive terminal with the bump on the end is facing up towards the open end of the compartment, then just gently re-thread the compartment back onto the strobe. Because you've got that dual O-ring seal, it's pretty rare to get a leak in the battery compartment. But if you do happen to have one, just dispose of the batteries, rinse the compartment out with fresh water, and let it dry. The compartment is sealed from the main part of the strobe, so rinsing with fresh water isn't going to do any more damage, and you really got to get all that salt out of there to prevent corrosion from forming. Once the compartment's dry, just install a new battery, and if you happen to get any strange malfunctions or problems, just reach out to us directly for service and support. At Backscatter, we take battery safety very seriously, and we want you to do the same. Here's three essential tips everyone needs to know. Number one, 
We only use the approved battery because it has built-in circuit protection to guard against overcharging, over discharging, and overheating. There's a lot of other cheap, random 21700 batteries out there, but they aren't going to have that circuit protection built in and they might lead to the strobe not performing up to spec. So please only use the approved battery. Number two is never ever charge lithium ion batteries unattended. This goes for any lithium ion battery, not just these. Problems when charging are very rare, but they can also be very dangerous. So make sure you're around just in case there's an emergency while charging. And number three, when storing the batteries or traveling with them, keep them secure in the included carrying case. Never travel with the battery installed in the strobe. When packing, keep your batteries in your carry-on bag because airlines do not allow lithium-ion batteries in your checked luggage. We include an in-depth battery FAQ with every single mini flash too. We also leave that linked in the video description below, so check that out for more details about battery safety. The fiber optic cable is what connects the camera's flash up to the strobe so that it fires when the camera takes a picture. It plugs into the bottom of the mini flash tube on one end and into the fiber optic port on your housing at the other end. Just push it in there or give it a little twist if it's a bit tight. So now let's get our camera settings ready. The settings that we're gonna explain are for a basic macro or close-up fish portrait style of shot. These are not meant to be absolute settings. Think of them more as a reliable starting point for that classic easy shot. Macro and close-up shots typically look best when there isn't too much ambient light in the shot. So we're gonna get our settings dialed for a nice dark background and to allow the light from the mini flash to highlight the subject and make it stand out from the environment. Depending on the size of the subject and the lens that you're using on the camera, the distance that we're going to be away from that subject could vary, but we're always gonna be talking about something that's within arm's reach for a larger subject down to right in front of the lens for super tiny stuff. Start by installing the camera in the housing and getting the flash connected and turned on. Depending on your particular camera and housing, this might be either a pop-up flash, a clip-on flash unit, or an LED flash trigger. We want to activate the Live View Boost. Live View Boost brightens the on-screen preview image so that we can more easily see what we're shooting even if the scene itself is dark. This is found in the main menu under the Display Options. Next, let's get the exposure locked in. Bring your ISO down to 200 and stop the aperture down to the highest f-stop. Then set the shutter speed to 1 1 25th. Now let's get the strobe into position. We're going to get the strobe set up into a reliable starting position for classic macro lighting highlighting the subject's face while maintaining shadows below to help pop it off the background. Regardless of the mode that we're shooting in, the method for aiming and positioning the strobe is going to be the same. There's not one magic spot that your strobe can be in for perfect lighting every time. Every scene's a little bit different, but with this technique, you can easily get a safe shot to review before fine-tuning your lighting. First line up the shot on your test subject and focus on it. Because we have that live view boost turned on, you should be able to see it and focus on it, no problem. Then bring your strobe up straight above the lens, angled down towards your subject. Turn on the focus light and aim it at the subject's face while checking the shot on your camera to see where that strobe is aiming. Keep the strobe straight in line with the lens so that all you have to do is angle it back or forth to find the focus light and aim it where you want. This is much easier than trying to light something from the side when you're just getting started. You can always move on to that after getting established on the subject. It's the same process when adding on the snoot. 
just snap it on and use the focus light to aim while keeping the strobe and snoot over the lens and angled down onto the subject's face. You can check out our how to use the optical snoot guide linked in the video description for more info about snooting. The first mode we're gonna cover is the smart control or SC mode for automatic TTL flash power. In this mode, the brightness of the flash is completely automatic, making great lighting about as easy as possible. The smart control mode only works with Olympus cameras. Other cameras will only be able to use Mini Flash 2 in the manual, high-speed sync, and remote modes. There are two different smart control modes. SC mode is for larger subjects like fish portraits, turtles, or small reef scenes. SC macro mode is for much smaller subjects that are way closer to the camera lens. Both smart control modes also work with the optical snoot attached for accurate automatic results when you want to light just your subject and separate it from a confusing, cluttered, or camouflaged background. There's just one setting in the camera that we need to activate in order for smart control to work. That's the RC flash setting. Open up the camera's main menu, then find and turn on the RC mode. This will be under one of the camera icons for photo settings. RC mode is how the camera talks to Mini Flash 2 to achieve the automatic flash power, and we can control all this via the RC flash menu. With RC mode active, go to the main shooting screen of your camera and press the OK button to bring up the RC flash menu. If the RC flash menu doesn't come up, press the info button to toggle between that menu and the normal quick menu. Set the RC flash to group A and channel one with the other groups turned off. We also wanna make sure that the RC flash mode is set to TTL, not manual. When you're in the smart control modes, Mini Flash 2 gives you a warning beep when it fires at its brightest power output. If the strobe is telling you that it's firing as bright as it can, but the resulting photo is still too dark, the most likely problem is that you're just not close enough to your subject. Get closer and take another shot. If you're still hearing that warning beep and getting too dark of an image, then increase the camera's exposure to make the scene brighter. You can adjust the brightness of the automatic TTL flash power if you need to make it a little brighter or a little darker, but I'm gonna put up a camera nerd alert here because most users probably won't need to get into adjusting the TTL accuracy because it's already so accurate. To adjust the brightness of the TTL flash if you want to, you go into the RC flash menu and find the flash exposure compensation. You can adjust this brighter or darker. The other primary mode on Mini Flash 2 is manual mode where you control the brightness using the power dial. The good thing is that manual mode is super easy to use too. All you have to do is click the mode dial to the M and then use that big red power dial to adjust the strobe power brighter or darker. Seven is the brightest and one is the lowest. Just adjust that strobe brightness based on whatever your scene and subject require. While automatic TTL is convenient, manual mode is better or even required in certain shooting situations. If you're shooting a subject that's relatively far away, like more than a meter or so, you'll need your flash to be brighter to reach that subject, so it's better to just leave it set at a higher power level if you aren't going to be getting any closer to your subject. If you're rapidly firing your strobes for fast action, you're gonna need them set to a certain speed that you know they can keep up with. You'll also need to be in manual mode on your main strobe when you're doing remote off-camera lighting, but we'll talk about that a little later on in the video. The only thing that we need to do in the camera to use manual mode is to turn off that RC flash mode that we enabled for TTL. Head back into the camera menu and just disable RC flash mode. 
When first turning the strobe on in manual mode, you need to take a single test shot with the camera so that the strobe can synchronize with the camera flash. The strobe's gonna automatically learn and sync with the camera after just that one test shot, then every shot after that should be perfectly in sync. You wanna just make sure that you're doing only a single test shot when you're doing that test because continuous firing might make the strobe think that there's actually a pre-flash coming out of the camera that it needs to cancel out. If you're having trouble getting the mini flash to synchronize properly, you can just turn it off and turn it back to manual mode again and take another single test shot for it to relearn and get back in sync. If you're still having a problem, just can't get it synchronized, you can always give us a call and we'll be happy to walk you through it. Next, we're gonna talk about the high speed sync mode or HSS for short. HSS allows you to use the Mini Flash 2 at shutter speeds faster than the normal maximum flash synchronization speed of the camera. With HSS on, you can shoot at shutter speeds up to 1 8,000th of a second while still using a strobe. You do this to shoot with a more open aperture for a shallower depth of field and a softer bokeh kind of look while still maintaining a darker background thanks to the faster shutter speed. The downside to this is that the flash power is diminished because the shutter speed is now faster than the flash as opposed to normal shooting where the flash is faster than the shutter speed. This just means that the faster your shutter speed, the less bright your flash is going to appear in your shot. So you wanna use this technique for close-up shots where you can get the most light onto your subject. There are two ways to achieve HSS. You can either use RC flash mode or use a third-party flash trigger such as those made by Turtle and UW Technics. Using RC flash mode is the most common option, so that's what we'll explain here. If you're using a Turtle or UW Technics trigger, check out those instructions for those products or just give us a call if you need some help. And because we're using RC flash, we don't actually use the HSS setting on the Mini Flash 2. That's reserved for shooting with third-party triggers and other non-Olympus cameras. Instead, we use the Smart Control modes, so just go ahead and select either of those. Olympus cameras call their HSS setting in the camera Super FP. To get Super FP activated, bring up the main menu and turn on the RC flash mode again. Then bring up the RC flash mode options and set it to FP and select the manual option instead of TTL. While it is possible to shoot HSS with automatic TTL at the same time, we recommend shooting HSS with manual flash power. Use the red power dial to select power level five, six, or seven. Anything at four or lower will fire at the same power as five. Set the mini flash to one of the smart control modes, set it to power level seven, and then set your shutter speed on your camera as high as you want and take a test shot. Check the exposure on that and then adjust the shutter speed faster or slower to adjust the brightness of the flash in your shot. The next mode that we'll cover is the remote mode, which is one of the coolest and most unique features of the Mini Flash 2. Remote mode allows you to place a second Mini Flash 2 on the backscatter remote lighting muck stick, then wirelessly trigger and change the power levels of that second remotely placed strobe from your main strobe on your camera rig. By adding a special infrared filter to your main strobe, you can hide the flash beam from it so that the only strobe that's actually visible in the shot is the remote strobe. This is what gives you the ability to shoot with an off-camera snoot, to do side lighting and cool back lighting in the easiest method possible. It also opens up the possibility of adding in the color filter system for fun, colorful backgrounds. A minimum of two Mini Flash 2 strobes is required to do remote lighting. 
You have one strobe on your camera with a fiber optic cable, just like normal. That's your main strobe. The second strobe is the remote strobe, which gets the light pipe attached instead of a fiber optic cable. Light pipe is only compatible with the ball mount, not the YS mount. You want to stretch the rubber lanyard of the light pipe over the ball of the ball mount to secure it on there before you thread it down. Use a clamp to mount that remote strobe to the backscatter remote lighting muck stick, or you could use a small tripod. Set the mode dial on the remote strobe to the remote position, and then go out and place that near your subject and aim the strobe at it. Make sure you use the focus light to assist with aiming, especially if you're using the snoot. Then make sure that the light pipe on there is pointed back towards you and the main strobe in your camera. Your main strobe needs to be set to the manual mode and any power level you want. If you don't want that main strobe to appear in the shot, add the infrared filter with the filter holder so that the flash beam is invisible, but it will still trigger and control the remote strobe. You just need to aim the main strobe towards the light pipe on the remote strobe so that they have line of sight to each other. To send over the power level that you want your remote strobe set to, just select the power level on the red knob on your main strobe, aim that at the light pipe, and press and hold the silver button on the main strobe. Then the remote strobe is gonna fire. About one second later, it'll fire again. That second flash is what confirms the remote flash received the correct power level signal. Once the main power level signal has been set on the remote strobe, it's gonna stay set there until you send over a new one from the main strobe. Now you have the freedom to frame your shot however you want completely untethered to your lighting source. You can shoot from different angles and change the brightness of your strobe without having to swim over to it or reach out for it, potentially blowing your shot. Just remember to rotate the light pipe on the remote strobe to face your main strobe as you move around and change your shot. The final mode on Mini Flash 2 is test mode. When you're in test mode, you can turn the red power dial to any setting, press the silver button, and it'll fire at that power level. We like to use this to get our buddy's attention or you can even use it for light painting and long exposure shots if you get real creative. Plus, there's another safety feature built into test mode. You can press and hold the silver button to activate an emergency beacon that pings the LEDs on the front of the strobe for up to 12 hours on a fully charged battery. Mini Flash 2 works with all of the same accessories as Mini Flash 1 and the macro wide 4300 video light. They even share the same batteries. The optical snoot allows you to tailor the flash beam down to that specific size and shape of your subject and really make them pop off of their backgrounds. The backscatter remote lighting muck stick supports the Mini Flash 2 perfectly in any kind of sandy bottom for off camera lighting. And it even has an adjustable height sand anchor so that it prevents rotation and you can conveniently clip it off when you're not using it. The infrared filter goes on the front of your main strobe when shooting remotely to completely mask the light from that strobe to the camera and our eyes. The only flash visible in these shots will be from the remote strobe. The color filter system is available in both bold and pastel color sets and they attach directly to the front of the Mini Flash 2 the macro wide 4300 video light, or you can attach them directly to the front of the snoot for wild, colorful elements in your shots. There's also a wide angle diffuser that's included with every Mini Flash 2. You just snap that on when shooting wide angle to make that beam a little wider, a little softer and more diffused. So that is a complete guide to the Mini Flash 2 and Olympus mirrorless cameras. Use the smart control mode with the camera's RC mode for automatic TTL exposure. Switch it into manual mode when you're doing more rapid fire and shooting a subject that's farther away or when you're doing off-camera remote lighting. Use the high-speed sync feature to create dark backgrounds even when shooting more open apertures for a shallower depth of field. 
and use test mode for signaling your buddy and for safety. Attach the optical snoot to highlight subjects and eliminate cluttered, camouflaged, or confusing backgrounds. If you want to learn more, you can always give us a call, send us an email, or check out any of our resources on backscatter.com. We got a bunch of videos about Olympus cameras and the Mini Flash 2 for you to explore, and we'll leave those linked down in the bottom of the description as well. Your purchases from Backscatter or any of our authorized dealers help us keep making more of these videos, and every purchase always includes free lifetime tech support. I'm Robin from Backscatter signing off, and thanks for watching.